Hello everyone, welcome to They Paid What? Where I hope to help you never pay full price for home decor that you love. Whether you're watching on Craft Around the Clock TV, on YouTube, or on my Facebook page, The Honeysuckle Haven, I am so glad you have joined me. We are going to do a couple fun, I'm going to try to do a couple fun projects tonight, see if I can fit in two. Um, so, if you are hopping on out there, say hi and let me know you're out there tonight. If you are new to any of the pages, the Honeysuckle Haven, Craft Around the Clock TV, um, let me know that. If you are watching on replay, put hashtag replay and maybe let me know where you're watching from and let me know that too. So how is everyone? I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July. We had a pretty good 4th. I'm trying to think. We did a lot around the houses. <laughs> did a lot of work stuff. We did relax a little bit. Um, yesterday, we went to my mom and dad's, so that was nice. And the kids did a little fireworks. So we had a good 4th. Hope you guys did too. So if you saw my post, we are going to do, um, going to attempt to recreate some hanging pendant lights. Um, inspired by, there, I put a few different examples out there. They're not going to look exactly like any of them. It's going to be kind of a mixture of the three or four lights examples that I put out there. And then um, there's some hanging baskets that are from Pottery Barn that we're going to um, use as inspiration to create um, ours tonight. So uh, hopefully I can get it all in just in time. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining. Oh, there's my second mama out there. Love you too. And Terry and Teresa, all kinds of people hopping on. Everyone have a good weekend. Oh, there's my brother out there. Love ya. Tell Chloe hi. I can't wait to see these. Oh, good. These are pretty simple tonight. Not hard at all. After I did, um, let's see, I did the rooster. That one was kind of involved. That was a harder craft. What was last week's? I can't even remember now. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I have to go, I have to think. If anybody can remember, what did I do? I don't remember. I'll think about it. It'll come to me. But we're going to do the pendant light tonight and the hanging baskets. And they're pretty easy. Excited for your projects. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you for joining, Kathleen. Okay, so, um, hi, Alice. We're going to use a couple different supplies. So I'm going to give you a couple options on the hanging baskets. I always like to give you options because you can't always find what um, the supplies that I have because depending on where you live, you, we just don't have the same things at every Dollar Tree or every Dollar General. So I'm giving you a couple different ideas that you could make these hanging baskets. If you saw the Pottery Barn inspired baskets, you'll have to let me know. It was If not, go back to my page and... Um, tell me let me or check it out if you didn't see them hi Ellen I was reading yours I love simple <laughs> good me too I like simple as well all right so for the hanging baskets they were set up two and I wrote down the prices here set of two for hundred and forty nine dollars so we're going to recreate them two different ways one way is going to be less than five dollars for both of them <laughs> so you can't beat that that we're going to make them out of these uh, wicker. Are these wicker? There it says wood blend wreath from Dollar Tree. So I have two different sizes, and you can see I already started staining this one. There were two different size hanging baskets. There was a smaller one and a bigger one. So we're going to use these tonight, and then I have another option for you as well. So let's start with the hanging baskets because that uh, this one I already have it started. So we'll just go ahead and finish. So these come from Dollar Tree. If you see these and you want to make the hanging baskets, this is a fun way to do it, a really inexpensive way. Now, to get this color here, what I did was I just started staining it with my Waverly Antique Wax that I use all the time. Now, my dogs are going to bark tonight because I'm home alone and they bark at every noise. And they're spooked because of all the fireworks <laughs> that have been going on lately. So they are just barking at everything. So if you hear dogs barking, just ignore it because that's what they've been doing all weekend. <laughs> I'm going to put some gloves on tonight. Can you believe it? I always get messy and I, this, tonight I'm going to use some gloves so I don't get so messy. Hi Marla and Dolores. You made the 
Oh, yes, the patriotic wreath. Yes, <laughs> that is what I made. Thank you. I could not, would not come to me with the ribbon and the fabric pieces. That's right. All right. So all I did to get this color was I used a sponge brush and I wiped this. Um, I just dipped it in my Waverly Wax and wiped it on the wreath all over. Just kind of smeared it in. Now, I did a lot of it because it is a little time consuming because all of these little cracks and crevices where it's all woven together, it takes a little time to get in there. So I went ahead and started so that it wouldn't take the whole 45 minutes just to stain a wreath. When I saw these baskets, it reminded me of these wreaths. Uh, I'm like, I can totally recreate those with that. Way cheaper than, what did I say it was? $149, $150. So that's my goal, to help you think outside the box. When you see decor you love, but you don't like the price, ways, think ways that you can recreate it for way less, a fraction of the cost. So that's the goal here. That's our, that's our mission in this series. They paid what? <laughs> Craziness, some of the prices. I can't do you live tonight, I feel. Oh, you feel, is it yucky? Is that what you said? Or I can't, oh, I missed it. I could not read it. I'm going to go back and read that one. <laughs> Probably looks silly trying to read what that said. <laughs> All right, so we are just filling this in all the cracks and crevices and then I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe off the excess and some wipes off more than the others so some parts are going to be darker than the others and that gives you more that rattan the baskets were a rattan um, basket and so it gives you more of that look it's a little more variated it's not all solid now, once I used the sponge brush, I took a little paintbrush and I got down in the cracks where I couldn't reach with the sponge brush. So you just go down in there and just, no rhyme or reason, you're just slopping paint <laughs> or the wax all over inside of there. And then we're gonna wipe it off with what we can reach anyways, with the paper towel. And I'm going from this side, the outside of the wreath, and the inside of the wreath to try to get all the little light spots. Now I'll probably miss some for time purposes. I'm not going to sit here and make sure I get every little spot. I'll go back and touch it up after the video when I have time to just sit and uh, make sure I get all of it. But I'll get as much as I can for right now. And you guys will get the idea here. I will have to watch the replay. Oh my, you have to get up. I saw part of it before it went away. You have to get up at 4 a.m. I completely understand. Sounds like my husband. He has to get up early too. I think I hear, I hear somebody in the house. Hopefully it's the dogs. <laughs> Hopefully it is Nilla, she's uh, our newest puppy. I have to post a picture for you guys. When we got her, she was a little bitty, real tiny, and she's six months old and she's already 40 pounds. So she, the vet said she was going to be a horse. <laughs> and I believe it, because she's getting so big. Okay, I think, I know I did not get all the spots. So you guys are gonna be saying, oh, I see lots of light wood spots in there. Just ignore it, because <laughs> I'll go back and get them later. So now I'm gonna take my paper towel and wipe off all the excess that I can reach. This is why I wore gloves tonight, because this is very messy. What kind of puppy? Um, she is a golden doodle, a full-size golden doodle. Her parents were a full-size poodle and full-size uh, golden retriever, so she's gonna be pretty big. 
Is she, no, yeah, she's a golden doodle. Um, she looks like, a, I mean, the labradoodles, they look very similar. They're so sweet. What did that say? What breed is your horse? <laughs> she and she eats like a horse. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Look how pretty that color is. And do you see the variation? Like some of it doesn't take the wax as well as like the inside pieces are a lot darker, but it looks really pretty. It kind of mimics that rattan look that we're going for. Okay, taking the gloves off. My grand puppy is seven weeks. Oh my goodness, 70 pounds. <laughs> that one definitely is a horse. Let's set this over here. Okay, now let's close this up. For the bottom of the basket, what we're gonna do you have a couple different options. I'm giving you options tonight. You can get these wood discs from Walmart. I think this one came from Walmart. A couple dollars. You can get a wood disc. This one is a ooh, seven inch disc. And I did not look at what the dimensions. This is the smaller wreath from Dollar Tree. There's a smaller one and this bigger one. This one is 12 inches. I want to say eight, maybe eight inches, probably. Um, the smaller one, and then you get this disc from Walmart, or I'm going to use foam board tonight. Because if you can't get a wood disc, you could use a bowl that's this die or this circumference around, and just trace it on your foam board. I already know this will fit, so I'm going to trace it. But if I did not have this, I would use a bowl or a lid to a bowl or something that you have that's round that you can trace around. I'll show you for this one. Let me set this aside. This 12 inch one, I found this bowl. <laughs> this was a Dollar Tree bowl and it would work. So that's what I was going to use to trace around for that one for the bottom of it. Okay, let's set that aside. Make sure that doesn't fall on me. So we traced around it, around on my foam board. And this foam board just came from Dollar Tree. You can get it at any craft store, of course. You can get it at Dollar General. And then we're going to cut it out with an X-Acto knife. You can use scissors, but it, um, it will wrinkle up the foam board a little more than what an X-Acto knife does. Make sure I keep my thumb out of the way. And I am cutting on the outside of the line. Now what I like about the foam board is we can kind of um, fit it into this wicker wreath. You can kind of force it in there because it has it's not hard, it gives. So you can make it fit in there more snug. I'm just and I'm not worrying about cutting like in a perfect circle because, like I said, we're going to kind of push it up inside of this uh, wreath here, so it's going to not be a perfect circle anyways by the time we're done. Okay, now I'm going to go around the back and get the paper on the back that I didn't cut all the way through. See, I didn't go very far. I can't see the line. So we're going to go a little further so I can see it. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you, we're going to stain the foam board to match the wicker. The spot that I missed here. It does not have to be perfect. Don't worry about cutting it perfect. It just has to fit in your wicker wreath or your wood wreath that you get from Dollar Tree. Okay, do you see? It's not perfect. <laughs> but we can make it fit in here by pulling the little wood pieces back. I just want to make sure that it's going to fit in there. I don't need to cut any off. So that will fit right in the bottom. Hi, Debbie. Aw, 67, but which is, oh, you are so sweet. Thank you. Too sweet. Okay, now glove again. 
I should have uh, cut this out and then stained it right after I stained the wreath, but that's okay. Now, we're just going to take paper towel and our Waverly Wax and stain it right on this foam board. Oh, thank you for the stars. Thank you, thank you. I see that. And the hearts and the smiley faces and the comments. Thank you. Now just take your paper towel and you just wipe it on there. I'm going to get wax on this other hand. And it almost mimics wood. If you guys saw, I think it was last fall, I made faux wood out of foam board. And it was a little more of a process than this. But it's amazing how you can turn this stuff into, make it look like faux wood. Do you see that? Look at that. And then flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Just wipe it on and smear it around. Really easy. I think I have one that's already dry that we're going to use. But I wanted to show you how I did it. Okay, and then you just take your paper towel and get the edges, just in case any of the edges show a little bit. And that's all you do. That's it. Make a big mess. <laughs> Let's see, hi Kathy and Sharon. Okay, so we're gonna clean up my hands and then we're gonna put this basket together. Thank you, thank you for the stars. I see that I'm trying to, I told you guys, get better at that. Wax on, wax off, you're right, Deborah. <laughs> That's one of my, I love that movie. I wouldn't say my favorite, but I do love that movie. It takes me back to when I was a kid. Okay. So here's the one that I have that's dry. You see, it just use the Waverly Wax on there. We're going to set that one aside and let it dry and get rid of this mess. And hopefully, let's see how we're doing on time with it. About half an hour. Now, before we glue the bottom in, we are going to it had two rope um, handles or hangers from the hanging basket. So I'm just going to use some jute rope. You can use whatever kind of jute rope you have. The This is a little bit of a thicker jute rope and I don't know the millimeter or the size. I don't know what if it'd be millimeter. What do you call it? Let's see what this one is. This one says, does it say the weight? Oh, it says grams and ounces. Oh, pound. I don't know. I don't know what it, how you uh, measure the size of it. That's terrible. This is the kind you get from Dollar Tree or at Walmart in their craft section. This is a little bit thicker. It's not as thick as like the nautical rope that you get at Dollar Tree. It's, a, it's in between. And I got this from a resale shop, like a Goodwill. I caught my wire. Uh, it was a big spool of it. I told, I think you guys have heard that before. There was a big bag of all kinds of jute rope and it was in there. Okay, so now what I did is I just took my jute rope and I cut two pieces the same length. And you want them to be the same length because you want your basket to hang level. You don't want one side to be longer than the other. So I already have them cut. Let's make sure that I got them the same length. I did, two pieces. And then let me think how I wanted to do this because they did not have a knot at the top. So I'm going to loop it through one side here. Loop it through like that. And then we're going to glue it together right there. And then I'm going to wrap some string around it to hold it. So I looped it down through the wicker and pulled it up and then we're going to wrap it right there together. Hope that makes sense. Let's put some glue on this side. Glue it together. Then after I get the other side, we'll wrap them and I'll show you how we're going to do that. That way it won't come apart on us. Oh, there's my mama out there. Hi mom. 
hope I see some other people hopping on. How is everyone? Thank you for joining. I hope you guys had a good fourth. Thank you for the stars out there. Okay, so now we're gonna take the other end and I did put a little bit of hot glue on the end so that it was easier to feed through the wicker or through the wood. I keep calling it wicker. It reminds me of wicker. It said wood blend, wood blend wreath. Feed it through there, wherever you can get it through. And we're gonna make sure we pull it up about the same height as the other side. And glue those two pieces together. So we made like a long handle, just like that. That's how theirs looked on the inspiration piece. If you saw the picture, now I posted a picture of, there was like three or four different lights and these hanging baskets. If you click on the picture and then make it bigger, you can see up close what they look like and see the price, how much they cost if you would buy them. Okay, so we glued those together just like that. And now we're gonna take our smaller jute rope from Dollar Tree or Walmart, wherever I got this. If I can find the end. Maybe, where did the end go? I have another one here. We're going to grab that so I don't have to waste time looking for the end. Okay, and we're just going to take this smaller jute rope and hot glue it a little bit and wrap it around. And then that's going to kind of reinforce so these don't come apart. I hope that makes sense. A little glue. Let's cut off a piece. And put it on there and we're going to wrap it around and pull it kind of tight as we're wrapping. And then put a little more glue and then wrap a little further. Wrap all the way up where we glued the two ends together. Wait till you guys see the pendant lights that we're gonna make here in just a little bit. Super excited about both of these projects tonight are gonna go, um, my daughter is going to be moving down in the basement here soon. <laughs> and she wanted some decorations for downstairs. So both of these projects are gonna go with her. Okay, so you can see that. So I just wrapped it around there just like that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Let's cut a piece off. And then we'll cut the other handle and then glue our bottom on. And then this will be done. This one. Silly dogs. They are so spooked from the fireworks. Every little noise that they hear. <laughs> The puppy, she like took off running and I had to, I took her out. I didn't know the kids were letting off fireworks already. They're older, so it was okay for them to be out there without me. 19 <laughs> and the other uh, 19, 23, uh, and then my son, he was, he's 15. So they were started and I did not know and I let the puppy out and she took off running. As soon as they lit a firework. So I had to chase her down. Luckily, we don't have neighbors for a long, like they're far away. <laughs> she didn't go too far. Okay, wrap that and then cut the end off. So then she came in and hid under the bed the rest of the night till they were done. She did not like them. Just checked out picture on your page. Oh, good, good, good. Yes, if you did not see the picture, you'll have to go back. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna do the handles. On the other one, I'm not gonna take the time to wrap it. I'm just gonna glue it and then I'll wrap it later so that you can see both projects. But you saw that process, how to do it. Now we're gonna feed this one up. Go ahead and put glue on your jute rope. Let it cool just a little bit here. That way when you try to feed it through the wicker or through the wreath, it will, won't fray on you as bad.
Okay. Try to find a good spot to feed this one through. Make sure I'm about the same distance as the one across from it. And I pull that up about the same height and then glue them together. Oh, I hear somebody in there. Hopefully it's my husband and my son. <laughs> my little grand fur baby got in the bathtub and wouldn't come out. Aww. Yeah, they get so scared. Okay, we're gluing the other end. Let's see how we're doing on time. Oh my, I gotta hurry so you can see the other one. Okay, we're going to feed this one up through here. Make sure it's kind of the same distance. Oop, that one frayed a little bit. Okay, let's make sure they're about the same distance apart. And then glue them together. And then we're going to glue our base on there, and then you can see what it looks like. I need a glue stick. I uh, thought I would try to do two projects tonight. Hopefully it works out. Then wrapping the uh, jute rope around this too hides any glue mess. Like right now I kind of have a glue mess. Okay. So there we go. There's our two handles for that hanging basket. Now we're going to glue the bottom on. So this is our foam board bottom. We're just going to squeeze it in there and then hot glue it all the way around. Really easy. And just squeeze it, pull the wood wreath back a little bit and fit it in there. Just like that. Really easy hanging basket. And then take your hot glue and go all the way around the inside. Make sure you get most of the edges. You're not going to be able to get them all because they don't all touch some of the wreath. But get the ones that you can. We're going to let that dry a minute. Now while that's drying, I'm going to show you, I told you I'd have two options. So they were $150, $149 for the set of two. They also have these at Dollar General. Look at these. They're already done for you. Um, they don't look exactly the same, but they're still baskets, and they're flat, and they're really cute. Two sizes. These were $8. This was $8, and this was $10. So for $18 instead of $150, you can recreate the same thing. So that would be super cute, too. So those are from Dollar General that I found. If I found this one, I've had this one for a while at a Goodwill for two dollars. So this is like a charger basket thing. I don't know. You can see these kind of baskets all the time at Goodwill. And stain it and do the same thing. You can make another hanging basket two bucks from Goodwill. So there's two other options for you. And then this one, then they just had an S hook at the top. So you just take an S hook and you hang it and then you have a cute little hanging basket. They had some greenery in it. I don't know if this is dry. It's probably going to stick to my paper. This little greenery came from Dollar Tree. So they had some little viney, vines like hanging down. <laughs> This is like, they called this a garland, a green garland. And this was at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to really quick so I can show you the pendant light. It won't take long, to, the pendant light's pretty quick too. So they had some kind of vines in it. 
you go back and I'll stage it really nice and take a picture so you can compare they had like some succulents in there these are all from Dollar Tree this is not gonna look very nice but you can get the idea and oops we don't want you rope in there they had a little plant that's from Dollar Tree they had a little pot and then they had their little hanging basket look how cute for this one would be less than two dollars super cute and so easy just with a wreath from Dollar Tree and some foam board and jute rope that's it so that's the first one the hanging basket pottery barn inspired hanging basket hope you guys like that looking for the tea towel oh for my last craft yeah that was super cute that towel was okay now if you saw my post there were like three examples of lights I bought some rope pendant lights from Amazon and I got two of them for $24 $23.99 so they were $12 a piece so we're going to use these tonight. Now the lights that I posted, they ranged anywhere from $50 to $400 for this hanging pendant light. We're going to recreate ours tonight for $24. 24 and 26. We're going to make two of them. I already have one made. So this is half of the cost. This is $12 right here. Then I found this basket. Look at this super cute basket from Dollar General. This one was $12, and there was a bigger one. I already made the bigger one for you. It was 14 So this one was 12 So 12 for the basket, 12 for the light kit. And if you would like the link to this, I can just message me, and I'll send you the link to this on Amazon. It was $12, two, two for 24 so all together, this is gonna cost us $24. So what I did was I flipped my basket upside down. Look how cute shape that's gonna be. And then this kit is really easy. This just unscrews off of here. I have hot glue on, stuck to my fingers. And then I took this part here and put it right there on the bottom of the basket. And I took, this is a chalk pen anything that would show up you could do a red sharpie a blue sharpie something that would show up on here and traced on the wire see the wire bottom there and you can see the little white spots where I put the little chalk and I just marked a little dot on each one all the way around really easy traced around that there's the lid and then I just took my, my little wire cutters, ace wire cutters, and cut it. I've cut them all but one. I have one left to cut for you. It does take a little bit of elbow grease here to cut it. But that's it. I think, oh, there we go. And then you just cut around all your little dots that you marked on your metal. Just like that super easy then you take your light kit and you feed it down in there if you have to trim off a little bit you can I had to on the other one I might have to trim off just a smidge Ooh, on this one let's trim off this spot right here you just take your wire cutters and take the little end of it off You have to squeeze kind of hard. Okay, let's see if that'll fit better down in there. There we go. And then you just put it down in there. And I like this is metal. You can, there were um, examples that were baskets too. If you see a cute wicker basket that you like, you can turn it into a light. Then take that other piece and go underneath and you just screw it right on there really tight as tight as you can get it can you post the rope light site here yes 
Angie, I will post, I'll put it in my video description when I'm done. Okay. So then look at that, look how cute. And then this has, it plugs in, it has a nice little switch right there. My daughter's gonna hang these, so she has a bigger one and a smaller one. They're just gonna hang them downstairs. Let's see what time I have. 10 minutes, so some of the examples had some rope on them. So I took my jute rope and I wove it around the bottom of the basket here. You don't have to do this step. If you like it, just the plain black basket, you can do that. Or if you like, if you do a wicker basket you find that you like, whatever kind of basket that you see, turn it into a cute little light. So I just took my jute rope and I wove it in and out. So I went over these little um, pieces here. I went over the first one, under the next one, over, under, over, under. So that's what I'm going to do here. Weave over, under, all the way around the base of it. And I might not get all this part done, but you'll see, we see part of it. And I'm just pulling it through over and under all the way around until I get back to the other side. Just like that. And then I did it the same thing. So I did two or three rows. I was able to feed the jute rope through you can pull lots of excess and then just kind of feed it through to wrap it around a few times. Now when I did the next row up above, I did the opposite. So if the one underneath of it I went under, I went over it this time so that it's like a basket, woven like a basket. Hope that makes sense. So we're going to do the next row. We're going to feed it over. This one's under, so the next one over. Make sure it's opposite of the rope underneath of it. So if the one under it went over it, you want to go under it this time. And weave it all the way around. You can wait to put your light kit in so you don't have to uh, worry about that big rope. <laughs> you can put that on after you're done weaving if you decide to put your rope on the basket. I'm just weaving it in and out, all the way around. And then when I got to the end, I tied it. My husband, <laughs> he's like, what kind of knot are you doing? I said, I don't know, I'm tying a knot. He said, you need to do a square knot so that it doesn't come undone. So he showed me how to do a square knot. I didn't know there was a name for it. I've done square knots all along and I didn't know that's what it was called. So I tied it in a knot when I was done right here and I made sure I tied it on the inside. So let's go ahead and cut this. And I made sure my jute rope was on the inside, both pieces. If you have to wrap it around to get it to go in, you wrap it around the little spindle here and you tie it on the inside. I didn't want my knots showing on the outside. So I just tied it in a knot and then I did probably about four more rows all the way around the bottom. Just gives it a little bit of that natural element at the bottom and it ties in the rope at the top and ties it together. So I did that. Let's see what time we have here. And then I had I got an Edison old-fashioned bulb from Dollar General. You could put whatever kind of bulb you want in it. This is called Vintage Vintage Light Bulb. It's just a 40 watt, so it's not going to get really hot. And then put that old-fashioned light bulb in there. And then look how cute that's going to look when I finish. I have the other one I'm going to show you finished. So let me get that one for you. Here it is. Look how cute that is. It's so easy. This one, this is the bigger basket. It was $14 for this one. So 14 and 12, so $26 made a really cute hanging light. Now I'm going to turn this one on for you. Where's the switch? I have it plugged in. It's way down here. They give you plenty of rope to hang it. It's going to be really bright. 
for you guys, but so cute. Way better price than the ones that I posted. They range from $50 to $400. I think the ones that were like this, that had the rope at the bottom, were $115 a piece. So instead of paying $115, this one's $26. And it, basically, it almost looks exactly like it. So really close. I think they left their rope, they just wrapped the rope all the way around the outside. I wanted mine to be woven in and out. That way it didn't slip off. I didn't have to worry about gluing it on there. So yeah, and I kind of like it. It looks more like a basket weave on there. So that's that one. That's the two projects I have for you guys tonight. I hope you like that. Oh, I love this idea. The baskets came from Dollar General. The lights, the light kit came from Amazon, and I'll post that link for you. They were two for $24, $23.99. Um, so I'll post that. And then the hanging baskets that are Pottery Barn inspired. I used Dollar Tree wreaths and foam board. I made the cute little Pottery Barn inspired hanging basket. And those were a set of two for $149. And this one I made for a little over $2. So really inexpensive. So that's the two ideas I have for you tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it inspires you. Love the lamp. Just beautiful. Your daughter. Yes, she's super excited. She, When I was making these, she said, those are going downstairs, right? <laughs> I said, yes, you can have them downstairs. Thank you, thank you. I hope it inspires you to never pay full price for home decor that you love. So if you see something that you love but you don't like the price, see if you can think outside the box and recreate it for less. Or send me the idea and I might just choose your idea one of these times. So send me a picture, make sure the price is on there, and um, I'll put it in my list because I have a whole list going of different ideas. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. I see all those hearts. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for joining me tonight. I will be back on um, Thursday night on Craft Around the Clock and then back on for They Paid What on next Tuesday, same time, 8 o'clock Central Time and 8, 8 p.m. Central Time next Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I think I have at least three more sets, three more episodes for now. So, all right. Thank you guys. I hope you have a good night and I will see you all next time. Bye.